I'm now going to study the behavior of a special class of LTI system, which is called a linear differential system. So linear differential system. And it has a particular representation, which is the following. So we're going to uh, write down a, a differential equation on the left-hand side, which is d to the n yt by dt to the n. So that's the nth derivative of yt plus the scalar multiple a1 of the n minus 1th derivative of yt. As, and so on until a n minus 1, some other constant, dy t by dt plus a n y t. And that's the sort of the derivatives of the output are going to be uh, is equal to b n minus m d uh, d to the m. Sorry, I'm not writing this properly d to the m uh, x t by d t to the m plus b n minus m plus 1 um, d to the m minus 1. Okay. And, and so on until, uh, so this should be n minus uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, sorry. Um, there's no... It's uh, actually n minus m minus 1. Just n minus m plus 1, as I had earlier, plus dot, 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 until bn xt. So this is the sort of the general form um, of the equation over here. Uh, and uh, what you're going to study over here is the uh, system where we're going to set the right-hand side to 0. So in other words, this is, remember, this is basically output, some function of the output equals some function of the input. And we're going to say, what happens to this? system when the right hand side is zero, in which case basically all of this all of this this stuff just goes away. And I'm also going to introduce one simplification where I'm going to represent d to the n y t by dt. I'm going to represent that as d to the n and so on. So that uh, d square would mean d square y t by dt square. So that's just a second derivative of y t. So if you have this, then the left-hand side over here, this can be rewritten in a simpler notation as d to the n, which is the sort of the different the derivative operator, sorry, d to the n y t, uh, it, plus a1 d to the n minus 1 plus, plus a n y t equals 0. So that's the right hand side is 0. And on the left, I just use this notation over here. And now we're going to do something kind of crazy, which is we're going to treat this thing on the left hand side as if it were a polynomial in D. It looks like a polynomial in D. And so uh, why not? Why don't we, we can, if you think of it this way, this polynomial in D is also called the characteristic polynomial. And as you can see, the, the characteristic polynomial is nothing more than, uh, sorry, not polymon, polynomial. It's nothing more than the, uh, than the def definition of the system, ignoring what the right-hand side says. It is a characteristic polynomial. And so if you treat as a polynomial in D, we know that from the fundamental theorem of algebra, this can be represented in the form as the so a product of these values, d minus lambda 1, d minus lambda 2, etc., d minus lambda n, and this whole thing, yt, equals 0. Again, we're just treating d, the derivative operator, 
as a polynomial, we're just doing a factorization. And for now, let's assume that these lambda i's are unique. You are going to make that assumption. And let's just assume that for now. Uh, then that means that since the left-hand side is equal to zero, this is only going to be true if the uh, solutions of this are going to be d minus lambda i yt equals zero. And it stands to reason if the product is going to be zero, then it must be the case that it's going to assume that value zero when each of these is zero. And if you expand this out again, this is nothing more than dyt by dt equals lambda i yt. And this is a very straightforward uh, differential equation, a first order differential equation, which has the solution yt equals ci e to the lambda i t, where c is some constant independent of t. So it's uh, just as we saw earlier, when you take something like this, every time you think of the form y dot equals a y, then the solution is going to be y equals e to the a. So that's what you see over here. Uh, and so that's the solution over here. And uh, so the solution yt then is going to be the uh, uh, is going to be the summation of these individual values. And so uh, that means that we can rewrite the solution of this thing over here and solve it as yt equals sigma i equals one to n c sub i e to the lambda i t. And the reason is because each of these has a solution of this form, which is going to lead to zero. And so the, by superposition and linearity, this general equation over here is going to be solving this uh, value over here. So what is the meaning of this? It means that, uh, first of all, we see that uh, these ones over here are just uh, exponentials of, of time, where the lambdas uh, if they're complex, this looks very much like ke to the st, where s, if you remember, if it's complex, is going to be leading to uh, an oscillatory behavior. Uh, if it's uh, if it's a cosine, for example, if it has a, a real and a complex part. And so, uh, but this is the output when there is no input. So what's going on? is that you have a system where there is no input and there's some energy still inside the system, so there's an output going on. And if you think about it, this is very much like, uh, let's say you had a bell, and that's a bell over here that I'm drawing over here, and we, we strike the bell with a with hammer, right? So this is the hammer and we strike it. And what happens is when you strike it at, at time zero, you hit it very hard, it's going to start vibrating. and there's no input, but it's got all that input at time zero, which you're going to ignore for now. And the output is going to look like this. The output is going to be a sum of these values where each of the lambda i comes from, uh, comes from right here, the roots of the characteristic polynomial. That's what we got those lambda i's from. And so these roots of the characteristic polynomial are corresponding to what's called the natural response of the system. So uh, in other words, when uh, each system, uh, the roots of the system correspond to those natural frequencies that the system exhibits when struck with an impulse uh, at time zero. So if you ring a bell, or any other material, then if you step back and you observe the frequencies that arise from that interaction, those will be the natural uh, frequencies. And this will, the sum of those frequencies is a natural response. And this has a very practical uh, behavior, which is that when you, have, when you have a radio set, when you tune a radio set, for example, what you're doing is you're creating a, a circuit and this circuit has a particular natural frequency, omega naught, which is which you can tune it to. So you can set that natural frequency by turning the dial of your analog radio. And what happens is whenever it receives energy that corresponds to one of these natural modes, it resonates. And which means that it, it picks up and vibrates extra strong at those natural frequencies. 
And so the, the, the choice of uh, which frequency a system responds to by, by tuning it with this tuning knob over here allows us to select uh, the uh, frequency at which we are going to be responding to phenomena. So if you have a, a white noise which is, has all possible frequencies, a tuned circuit which has a certain carefully chosen natural response is going to resonate only at its natural frequencies. If there's only one such natural frequency, then but it will respond exactly to that natural frequency. And that is the basis by which we are able to build uh, transistor radios, uh, all sorts of uh, devices in the electromagnetic spectrum by exploiting the natural response. So this is actually a very interesting and useful observation. And again, this comes from the use, uh, uh, systems which are linear differential systems. Of course, it won't true hold for all systems, but a linear, uh, time invariant differential systems which are represented in this form, they have this very nice property. Um, and in the book, there are a couple of examples of uh, uh, these natural responses of, uh, of such a system where we have both uh, where lambda is real and also when lambda belongs is a complex number. If lambda is a complex number, then we get, we get, we get a uh, oscillatory response that we can do it. Now, uh, I've assumed so far that uh, the roots are independent, which is why I can solve the characteristic, uh, poly, uh, uh, characteristic, characteristic polynomial in a particularly simple way. Uh, however, if um, the repeated roots, then the generalization is fairly straightforward, and I will not discuss that over here.